Bismillah, day 9 of the Tazkiya Ramadan series. Let's begin. Jannat Jalmun Tajri Min Tahtiya Al Amharu Khalidina Fiha Malika Jazaa Man Tazakka Gardens of lasting bliss, graced with flowing streams, and there they will stay. Such is the reward of those who purify themselves. Surah Taha, verse 76. So today we're looking at the effects of self-development, and so let's look at a few verses first. We have Surah Al-A'la, verse 14. Qad aflaha man tazakka. Successful indeed are those who purify themselves. We have Surah Al-Nisa, verse 49. Alam tara ila alladheena yazakkuna anfusahum bal bal allahu yazakki man yasha'u wa la yudlamuna fatila. Have you, O Prophet, not seen those who fall asleep elevate themselves? It is Allah who purifies whoever he wills, and none will be wrong even by the width of the thread of a date stone. Then we also have, Ya yuhalladheena amanu, la tattabi'a khutwat al-shaytan, wa man yattabi'a khutwat al-shaytan, fa innahu ya'muru bil-fahshai wal-munkar, wa law la fadlullahi alaykum wa rahmatuhu, ma zakka minkum, man ahadan abadan, wa lakinna allahu yazakki man yasha'u, wa allahu sami'u alim. O believers, do not follow the footsteps of Satan. Whoever follows Satan's footsteps, then let them know that. He surely bids <coughs> excuse me, all to immorality and weak wickedness. Had it not been for Allah's grace and mercy upon you, none of you would have ever been purified. But Allah purifies whoever he wills. And Allah is all hearing, all knowing. Surah An-Nur, verse 21. So these three verses have one thing in common. I'm not sure if you were able to pick it up or not. I mean, we've been talking about it for the past nine days, and yep, it's the use of tazakka or to purify. So the first verse reminds us of the impact of self-development on ourselves, and so it's a key to being successful. While the other two verses, they emphasize that at the end of the day, Allah is the one who purifies whom he wills. It's in Allah's hands. We can do as much as we can, but at the end of the day, it's Allah who chooses and the last verse also includes two of Allah's names, Al-Sami'a Al-Alim, which we discussed is a way of actually attaining self-development by embodying Allah's names and attributes. All hearing, all knowing, so he hears our du'as, he knows our needs for self-development, for tazkiya, he knows what's in our hearts, he knows our intentions. And so the main effect of self-development is that it, inshallah, will lead us to a blissful life in heaven. While if we choose to disregard self-development, then we will be faced with loss and punishment. Now we know the effect of self-development, so how can we go about attaining self-development and gaining good deeds in the process? One way is by cleansing ourselves from anything worldly, in that we have no trouble spending or doing things simply for the sake of Allah, simply to gain Allah's pleasure. For example, zakah or charity, sadaqa, is a way to strengthen our soul's purity. We have the verse, Take from their wealth of Prophet charity to purify and bless them, and pray for them. Surely your prayer is a source of comfort for them, and Allah is all hearing, all knowing. Surah Tawbah, verse 103. So we can see again in this verse, charity is a means to purify. But not only that, Allah mentions, again, two of his names, all-hearing and all-knowing. So he is all-knowing because he knows that giving charity is a way for us to avoid greed and selfishness, and it's a way for us to purify ourselves. We can also attain self-development when we move away from being self-centered, and it's all me, 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 to being person-centered, people-centered. And so what we actually do on this world, in this world, is for the benefit of all mankind. It's just not for us to benefit from. We want to see all our brothers and sisters. We want to see the whole ummah succeed just like we desire for ourselves. The Prophet ﷺ said, The servant does not reach the reality of faith until he loves for others what he loves for himself. So a person with tazkiyah tries the, to the best of their abilities to improve in good conduct, social morals, and preaching godliness so as to conform to the rights and rules God has prescribed for us. It's important to constantly know Islam's stance on self-development. So self-development isn't just focused on one's inner self or how they are spiritually, but it also includes one's thoughts, one's deeds, actions, and their personal social relationships in life. 
Now we have this verse that identifies even more ways to attain self-development. رَبَّنَا وَبَعْثْ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِكَ وَيُعَلِّمْهُمْ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Our Lord raised from among them a messenger who will recite to them your revelations, teach them the book and wisdom, and purify them. Indeed, you alone are the Almighty, all-wise. Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 129. So actually from this verse, we can work on our self-development. We can work on ourselves by, number one, reciting Quranic verses. Number two, instructing the book. And number three, imparting wisdom. And I'll just briefly explain each one. So we should actually already be doing this, especially in the month of Ramadan, which is reciting or listening to Quran. The words of Allah subhanAllah, they have a way to our hearts and our minds. And the way it's recited, the messages from the verse, they can affect us. And there's this verse in Surah Anfal, verse 2. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا وَعَلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَتَوَكَّلُونَ The true believers are only those whose hearts tremble at the remembrance of Allah, whose faith increases when His revelations are recited to them, and who put their trust in their Lord. So by reciting listening to Qur'an, we are strengthening our characteristics, our spirit, and our inner soul. So instructing the book, number two, basically means that the divine commands of our Lord, the divine attributes of Allah's mercy and justice, that through these, through acting upon this, we should be realizing that these commands are essential for humanity. It's a way of life. Number three, imparting wisdom is important for self-development, and wisdom can actually be displayed through various sorts of characteristics like kindness, generosity, etc. We even have the example of Luqman, who was mentioned in the Quran as well, who was very wise and was very grateful to Allah. So ideally, basically we can't really achieve tazkiyah if these three things are disregarded because these three things, they actually push us to help improve ourselves and be better Muslims. So the moment to reflect for today is, are you reflecting on the Quranic verses? Are you making an effort to recite or at least listen to some verses in the days of Ramadan? Are you following the commands that Allah prescribed for us as Muslims? Are you practicing or trying to increase wisdom? Now for dua, bismillah. Allahumma allimni al-kitab wal-hikmah wa faqihni fil-deen. Oh Allah, teach me the book and wisdom and grant me understanding of the religion. Allahumma ij'al al-Qur'ana rabi'a qulubina wa nur sudurina wa ja'la ahsanina. Allahumma ij'al al-Qur'ana hajjata lana wa la taj'alhu hajjata alayna. O oh God, make the Qur'an the blossoming spring of our hearts, the light of our hearts, and the dispeller of our sadness and grief. O oh God, make the Qur'an a proof for us and not against us. So again, I like to end with the, the typical, anything incorrect is from my own and all good is from Allah, so forgive me for my shortcomings. And also thank you for your patience again today for my voice, because again, I'm still not feeling that great, but alhamdulillah, Allah is still giving me the strength and ability to do these daily, inshallah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika, ashadu wa la ilaha illa ant, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Speak to you tomorrow, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.